Uh, hey guys, Hunter Britt with CrossFit Invictus. Today I'm here to talk about how to improve your squat without just getting a straight barbell out and just squatting for reps. Rotating to the hip. New runner. Alright, so first thing I'm going to talk about is the safety squat bar. What I like about the safety squat bar as opposed to the straight bar, uh, well first you will have to squat, right, to get a stronger squat, so we can't just skip that all together. But the great thing about it is when you do it, is you won't be able to load it as heavy, so maybe your joints will feel a little better uh, after training with this for a little while. But what it's going to try to do is going to try to fold you over a little bit, so it's going to try to push your upper back over. Uh, the great thing about that is it gives you a little bit more strength as you train. So when you go back to a regular bar, right, it gives you a little bit more stability and strength through there. So it's a little less challenging to maintain a proper position as you actually lift maximal weights on a straight bar. Um, so that's pretty great. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that's going to look like uh, now. So on the safety squat bar, like I mentioned before, what this is trying to do is as you squat, with this weight kind of the way it's pushed, it's trying to fold your upper back over, right? So this is a pretty ugly position, but the great thing about it is we're aware that's what it's trying to do. So I'm gonna try to force it up and keep a nice position the entire time through my squat. And then I'll just work through my normal range of motion, just like a normal squat. It will feel a little bit more like a front squat, so I'll be a little more upright than maybe I normally would like a back squat. Um, but the great thing about it might feel a little bit more in my quads. I still feel good about my hamstrings, which is a great thing being in an upright position. Uh, but when I go back to a straight bar, I feel incredibly stronger in my upper back, which for me gives me a lot of confidence when I pick up a max weight and it feels good on my upper back. Walking out, it just feels that much better to attempt it uh, going down with it. So second move we're going to talk about is the good morning. All right, and so a lot of times we think about the good morning as a hinging movement, so we would think it applies to the deadlift, but there is a strong correlation from the good morning to why it applies to the back squat, and we're going to demonstrate that now. All right, so on the barbell good morning, the reason that this works well with a back squat is in a back squat, right, we do not work through a back squat with a perfectly our front back. Right? We have to hinge forward. So the stronger you are maintaining some sort of forward lean, the better, right? So if we can improve our strength, even just maintaining a little bit of lean forward, right? That allows us to get into our glutes and our hamstrings a little bit more and get a little bit more contraction out of them. So if you train that and you don't need to train a full range of motion uh, or max range of motion or force yourself to go further than what you're capable of doing. If you're not very flexible, you don't need to get your chest parallel to the ground. I'm not very flexible, so for me, a good range of motion is gonna be huge. After that, if you're someone who's not extremely flexible, if you go any further, you're just rounding your back. So, a good rep is gonna be just break the hips back, go as low as you can maintain a good lumbar position, I feel in my hamstrings, and then right back up, squeeze the glutes, all right? So that is the position you're training. You don't need to move fast through this. You can keep a tempo on it. Whatever's prescribed for what you're doing works well. But if you can maintain a good slight forward lean, you get a little more out of your hamstrings for your squat, and that carryover will take you a long way. All right, so next movement is a front foot elevated lunge. All right, so the great thing about this, uh, again, it's a little easier on the joints rather than just doing a regular back squat because you won't be able to load it as heavy. So when you do it, I like to just take on, uh, stick to one leg at a time, do whatever reps you're doing, and then go ahead and switch. I like the front foot elevated because it allows for a little bit more range of motion uh, through the front leg than just doing it straight on the ground um, because typically a regular lunge doesn't allow you to get too low. So you just get whatever range or whatever distance you normally do for your lunge, and then you will just go down, come up, just kiss the knee to the ground, be careful. If you need to put a little pad in the back of your leg, that's okay, and then you'll just work your way through it. It's okay if you're not able to straighten out your leg all the way to the top. The focus is more just kind of at the bottom of the lunge, um, but as you work through it, just try to stay contracted the entire time, and then speed on the way up, control on the way down. 
All right, so next thing I'm gonna talk about is a Supine GHD plank. Uh, the great thing about this, I feel like it puts a lot of stress on the core, and the abs are so important when you're doing a squat. Um, we think about the legs so much when we're doing a squat, or everything else that we've mentioned in this video, uh, but the stronger your abs are, the harder they can push against your belt, or you're not wearing a belt, obviously you just need strong abs as you work through it. So the great thing about this is as you work through it, obviously put your feet in, straighten your legs, bend your legs, either one's fine. Lean back till you're straight, if your hands are down, it's a little bit easier. As your hands move up, it gets a little harder. You start shaking a little more. As you get a little better with that, you can start adding a little weight to your stomach. Most people don't need to add too much weight. What I'd recommend as you guys are going through that, obviously if you're following the program, there'll be reps or times or whatever it is prescribed for that. But you don't need super long durations of time to hold, uh, to hold that position. So more like 20, 30, 40 seconds kind of the higher end is a good time to hold that for. When you're doing a squat, right, we don't hold a squat for a minute long. So hold it for heavier, long, or sh heavier, shorter periods, just like if you're holding a heavy squat and just try to build a really nice strong core. And that's gonna go a really long way when you're holding really heavy weights on your back. All right, so there are four tips on how to improve your squat without just getting a barbell out and doing reps. So I hope that those four tips help or are something new to you. So go ahead and give them a shot and stick around for hopefully more videos that can give you help with improving your strength.